Paul was talking about other gospels being preached to the Galatians. And there's only one real gospel, and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we want to remember that. If you take the gospel and know what the gospel of Jesus Christ is, and you start adding things to it, like you've got to be baptized in this church to be a member of the body of Christ, that's adding to salvation. Or you've got to be baptized by us folks, us leaders, uh, or you cannot be uh, in the kingdom of God. There's so much uh, deception out here in our world today. And... Um, so we want to see the gospel, what I call this, the gospel in, a, in the nutshell, okay? So turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse uh, 1. And then we're going to go over to Isaiah 52 and 53 in a little while. Now, Paul is talking to the Corinthian church. And he says, now let me remind you, since it seems to have escaped you. Oh my goodness, that's bad. If you let the gospel of Jesus Christ escape you, that's why I like to stay in the scriptures continuously. Escape you, brethren, it's talking about Christ, to Christians, of the gospel, the glad tithing of salvation, which, notice this, which I proclaim to you, which I claim to you, which Paul claimed to you. Everybody got that? How many of you know that Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles? Okay? And so you got to remember that. So let's read on a little bit further. Which you welcomed and accepted upon which your faith rests. So our faith rests in the gospel that Paul preached. And now all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. See, that's very clear. All right, next verse. And by which you are saved. All right, let's make sure we understand that. We are saved by the gospel that Paul preached. Is that, is that what y'all get out of that? Look, you know, talk to me if you don't think so. We'll go a little deeper. If you hold fast and keep firmly what I preach to you, that is I, Paul, preach to you, unless you believed at first without effect and all for nothing. Now let me say something. God will never leave us. That's clear in the scriptures. But it ain't too clear. And you can see uh, where a lot of people certainly left him. I want you to see that. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But here's what Paul says. Unless you believed at first without effect at all for nothing. In other words, you believe mentally, but it really, you didn't believe with the faith that God gave you. This the next verse now. For I passed on to you first, and Paul's talking, that's I. Paul passed on to you first of all what I also had received. Well, Paul received the gospel. Where did he receive it? That Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, notice, died for our sins in accordance with what the scriptures foretold, which you will find in Isaiah 53. We're going to turn to that shortly. All right. Next verse. That he was buried, that he rose on the third day as the scriptures foretold. You'll see that throughout the scriptures. So what are there? Three things. Death, burial, and resurrection. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, water baptisms, yes. You, uh, uh, have we been united with the church? Sure we are. He baptized us into Christ. He baptized us into the church by the one spirit. No man baptizes anybody into the church. Now look what it says, that he was buried and that he rose on the third day as the scriptures foretold. So Paul is making it very clear to these Galatians and to us that there, <clears throat> there are many gospels out there, which he says they're really not gospels. They're just things that man has added on to the gospel of Jesus Christ, saying you got to do this and you got to do that. you you got to keep... The, the, the feast of the Lord, you've got to keep the law, you've got you to be baptized by uh, uh, John, Henry, uh, whatever. And 
no. Very simple, not complicated. Christ paid the price. Death, burial, and resurrection. All right, let's read a little bit more. And also that he appeared to, then he's talking about how many people that Jesus appeared to, which we know in this scripture, and I'm not going that way, but it's over 500 plus the disciples that Jesus appeared in his resurrected body, showing his resurrection. I mean, there, you know, there's Jesus going up. And you know, the Bible says that still some didn't believe. You'll see that in Matthew 28, the last verse. And some still didn't believe. So don't get too uh, shook up about folks not believing. They just, we just need to keep praying for them, okay? Now, let's turn over to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. <coughs> and you'll see the gospel in the Old Testament. I want to start with actually with a chapter 52. Uh, let's start with verse 13. Okay? Isaiah 52, verse 13. Here we go. Behold my servant. Now, when you read the Bible, find out my servant. Who do you think that is? No, that's Jesus. Behold, my servant Jesus shall deal wisely and shall prosper. He shall be exalted and, and extolled and shall stand very high. Now, that's talking about Jesus. Okay. Next verse. See the capital S there? My servant, capital S, so you know that's Jesus, right? Capital H, he, little h would be he, man. Everybody understand that? So anytime you see it's capital, you see the spirit. A little spirit, that's our spirit. Capital S is Holy Spirit, okay? Remember that. All right, now, next verse. For many, for many the servant of God became an object of horror. For many, Christ, God's servant, God's son, became an object of horror. Let's read on and find out how come. Many were astonished at him. See him, capital H, you know that's Jesus. His face and his whole, his, capital A, whole appearance were marred more than any man's, and his form Beyond that of the sons of men, but just as many were astonished at him. Now, in other words, he wasn't even recognized as a man. He was so beaten. You know, you take a whip, that's pretty rough. A whip coming across your back and your body. But you take a rod. You ever seen those rods that you, the horses, you know, you're on a chariot rod? Or take any rod. I know when, when, uh, when I was a boy, mom said to go out and, 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 and cut a stick, and I did. It was a, you could hardly see the stick. It was so thin. <laughs> but you take a rod across your back, it'll leave a mark, a big mark. Now, you've got to remember, when you read that, we should have gotten all of that. But he did for us. And I want to say, say something here in love. And, but when we re refuse to believe what Christ did for us, that's, that's a bad, bad thing. When God says, you're righteous, and he says, oh, no, I'm not. I'm not right. No, wait a minute. God says you're righteous. God says you're righteous. And you say, oh, no, you don't know me. I, I tell a lie every once in a while. That is, God says you're righteous. How many of you know when you don't believe God and you're arguing with God? No, I'm not righteous. How many of you know that God got after Peter and said, Don't you call what I have hollowed or made righteous, unrighteous anymore, Peter. See, if we don't accept what the Lord has done for us, there's nothing he can do for us anymore. You just got to accept it, believe it, and walk it out. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Oh, it makes you want to shout. All right, look out. All right, here we go. Now, but just as many were astonished at him, 
I mean, there he is on the cross, beaten blood, just a mess, like hamburger. Parts of his guts hanging out, just horrible. The pictures we see are not true to what he really looked like. This is what he looked like. Look, his face and his whole appearance were marred more than any man's. And his form beyond that of the sons of men. Wow. Next verse. Last verse in that chapter. He shall be startled and sprinkled. He shall he, so shall he startle and sprinkle many nations. Now we're talking about he, capital H, Jesus. And kings shall shut their mouths because of him, because of Jesus. For that which has not been told them shall they see. And that which they have not heard shall they consider and understand. So it's a picture of Jesus in the Old Testament here. This is the gospel that Paul preached. Let's move on to the next chapter. Now remember, there's not chapters or verses in the Bible. So this thought just runs right on. It's not like he's talking about, the, the, Isaiah's talking about a new subject. The subject goes on, no chapters, no verses, so just let it flow. Everybody understand that? Who has believed or trusted in, relied upon, and clung to our message of that which was revealed to us? I wonder who revealed it to him. Hmm. Well, we know it's God. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been disclosed? Next verse. For the servant of God grew up. Sounds like Jesus, doesn't it? Growing up. We know he came as a baby and had to grow up. Before him, before God, like a tender plant and like a root out of dry ground, he had no form or comeliness, royal, kingly, pomped. In other words, he wasn't considered a very handsome man. I mean, in his regular form now, before he was beaten. Okay, this is before he was beaten. Now he's talking about him growing up not royal kingly pomp, that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire of him. Just an ordinary man, Jewish man. Not much beauty, not much people would even give him a second look. Okay, that might be a new understanding in your mind about the Lord, but we've got to see what the scripture says there. Next verse. He was despised and rejected for us and forsaken by men. You know, he had a lot of disciples, and they all left him but the twelve. How many know that? You know it now. A man of sorrow and pain, and acquainted with grief and sickness. All of that you see, that pain, that grief, that sickness, was really ours that he bore on himself. And like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we did not appreciate his worth or have any esteem for him. Wow. That's powerful. Powerful. Now let's look at that. Let your eyes read through that. The Son of God became a man, incarnated. But he didn't have a whole lot of beauty, wasn't handsome. People rejected him. When I go back and I study about our Lord When he was in his hometown. Remember he went into the uh, synagogue. You remember that? And he opened the scriptures and, and turned to about the spirit of the Lord is upon me. It looked like they'd have been so excited. You know, they should have read the scriptures. Because they had the scriptures. 
But to, to make a long story short, the people that he grew up with, I mean, you can disagree with somebody. You might disagree with me, but don't push me over the, over the cliff. I mean, that shows me the hardness of their heart. That shows me that they are vicious folk. Isn't his mother Mary? It wasn't his father Joseph, his sisters and brothers? Aren't they living among us? We've seen this man, this man grew up from a little boy. They didn't believe him. And they were going to push him off the cliff. How many remembers that? I'm refreshing your mind. But all of a sudden he disappeared. Where did he go? He disappeared. Let me say something to you. Angels can change their appearance. How many know that? They can look like a man. You take Satan's angels. They can change and be like a man, just like a man. And you're talking to a man. You think you're talking to a man. You're talking to a fallen angel. So we in the last days. The Bible talks a lot about that. God, Christ could change his appearance. And he was out of there. He was gone. Nobody recognized him. How many of you know Satan changes his, peer, uh, his appearance as an angel of light? So that's why we have to stay in the scriptures and get our spirit to be able to discern. Because this is how you're going to make it through the last days. You've got to know this word. And you've got to know the spirit of God. And know when he gives you unction and, and, and tells you something. Yesterday I had somebody come over and... Um, and uh, I used to get on my roof and fix the leaks, but Susan won't let me do that no more. She thinks I'm getting old. <laughs> well, you know, we know we don't believe that, do we? <laughs> I lost my hearing aid. I'm on my tractor, you know, and I'm pushing bushes in the woods, and he's up there working on the roof, and finally I said, oh, I lost my, my, my hearing aid, you know, which is only $1,600. I still have one for the other ear. But I always use the one on my left, this one right here. So we looked everywhere, and all of a sudden, Spencer said, I believe, I believe it's in your house. I, think, I know it's in your house. I said, well, let's go look. And guess where it was? In my house. <laughs> many times, many times. I could just talk all night on that, just about. All right, let's move on here now. Oh, boy. One more. Okay. One from whom men hide their faces. He was despised. We did not appreciate his worth or have any esteem for him. Wow, man. You're talking about rejection. You're talking about being put down. And he's getting up there preaching. All right, next verse. We've got to move fast. I want to get through this. Surely he has bored our griefs, sicknesses. He's bored them. Our weaknesses. We all have weaknesses. We have, we have uh, griefs. But he bored them. And that's why when, we, they, when the devil tries to put it on us, we've got to say, no, Lord, you took care of it at Calvary. See, we're talking about Calvary here, what the Lord bore. This is in the Old Testament. This is the gospel that Paul preached. This is what Paul said in, in Romans 1, 16 and 17. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Notice this. And carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. That's why I am convinced that the church God, will believe are... and trusting God is not going to go through the tribulation years because the Lord took care of all that for us. That would be blaspheming for us to have to go through all that when he took care of it all for us. 
All right, look what it says. Yet we are nor ignorantly considered him stricken. Is that right? Yeah, ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted. Notice this, by God. For you and for me. God so loved us that he afflicted his own son to carry the penalty of sin, your sins and my sins. God stricken his own son for us as if, which, as, as if with leprosy. Oh. Get weak in the knees almost, don't you, when you think about that? And when God asks me something, yes, Lord, I am not going to balk. Are you? Look, they did all that for us. God sm smoked him for us, for humanity, as if he had leprosy. You ever seen anybody with leprosy? I've seen pictures of their fingers, just nubs. Pieces of their faces, their nose is gone. Their body eaten up. He took all of that upon himself that we might be free to serve the Lord. One thing we got to remember, we've not been saved just to go our own way. We have been saved to do God's will on this earth. We are God's body on this earth. And our first agenda is God's kingdom, God's people. Now, you haven't worked that out in your life? Just keep moving along. God will show you. That's why you get committed, so committed to God. All right, let's go to the next verse. Because you're going to serve something, and you're going to serve somebody. Either you're going to serve yourself, or you're going to serve some man, which will utterly end up in destruction. If it had not been the Lord, I would have done self-destruct a long time ago. Now, you might not understand that, but most men and women, you know, they go after the flesh, the things of the flesh. There stands the glass, fill it up to the brim. Now, some of you never did that. Some of you had done that. But, see, when you see what he did... I want to please the Lord. How many wants to please the Lord? Let's see your hands. You need to make that statement. I'm here to, and I'm not perfect all the time. I might make a mistake. But I thank God for 1 John 1, 9. And I get it cleared up right away. And I don't go to bed with anything on me at all. I'm clear. My conscience is clear. That's what Paul said. But God will be the final judge. And I say, yes, that's right. He'll be the final judge. All right. And he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquity. The chastisement needful to attain peace and well-being for us was upon him. And with his stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. Now what I do, in, in, and I know perhaps healing is probably the, some of the hardest things that were for us to bring out and, and really experience it. But I've experienced a lot of healing in God. I've experienced the healing, a lot of healing of my bones and things. I'm 82 years old. Everything I've got is limber. <laughs> just limber. <laughs> I'm just a limber man. <laughs> Look at there. <laughs> well, that feels good because I've, I've had aches and pains. But the, so if he took it, that settles it. When you pray, when you pray, Believe that you don't get it. No, pray. When you pray, believe that you receive it. When you pray, believe that you have received it. Even though it doesn't manifest at that moment, but you believe that you received it. We speak what we believe. Remember that scripture? We're like David. We speak what we believe. So when you pray, you pray and believe right then and there, even though it's not manifesting, 
you have received it. All right, let's go to the next verse. Now, this is all that our Lord, this is the gospel right here. Everything's about Jesus. Everything's on Jesus. I don't see anything about anybody else there other than it's Jesus that did all this. All we like sheep have gone astray. Well, we know that. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. But now, because of the obedience of one man, Jesus, we have all been justified, sanctified, made holy. We've got to remember that. Yes, we did go astray, but we've been saved. God has invested his nature into us. Our spirit man is a brand new creation with the nature of God. And therefore, he directs us by his spirit now. So, have gone astray, and we know that, and we know a lot of people have gone astray already today. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has made to light upon him, that is Christ, the guilt and iniquity of us all. So every iniquity, every guilt, everything that we've done in our life was laid upon Jesus Christ and he bore it all for us. God allowed him to be smitten for us. Go to the next verse. He was oppressed. How many's ever been oppressed? How many's ever been depressed? <laughs> we Sure, we all have, to some degree. But he had all the depression of all the world upon him. He was afflicted, he was submissive, and opened not his mouth. Oh, my Father. <laughs> Open not his mouth. When I read that years ago, sometimes I'll, I'll say something and I'll say, Lord, am I complaining? Because, you know, complaining is a real bad sin. When you look into the scriptures, it talks about complaining. Look at, open not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter. As a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth, and he was God in the flesh. Never doubt God's love. Doubt your doubts, but don't doubt God's love. Open not his mouth. Wow. I mean, when those scriptures get right in deep inside of us, we just have such great appreciation. Let's go to the next verse. Got to move fast. I want to get through this. this. By oppression, oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who among them considered that he was cut off out of the land. And you read Daniel talks about him being cut off of the living, stricken to his death for the trans. For what? Why? Was he guilty? No. For the transgressions of my people, Israel, and to whom the stroke was due. The stroke was due to Israel. The stroke was due to us. Now, we've been grafted in, so therefore, that means us too. Next verse. And they assign him a grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death. Now, we know that that the tomb that he was put in was cut out of the rock, and that was a rich man's grave. How many knew that? You knew that. All right. And uh, I forget the man's name. Uh, not Nicodemus, but what was it? it huh? Josephus. But Josephus. Good. Thank you. Although he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Next verse. Yet it was the will of the Lord to bruise him. Wow. Look at that. He had put him to grief. He, God, has put Christ to grief and made him sick. When you and he made, 
when you and he made his life an offering for sin, and he has taken from the dead in time to come, he shall see his spiritual offsprings, which we are. He shall prolong his days, and the will and pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. And we know that that will happen in the kingdom to come. Next verse. And he shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul and he and be satisfied by his knowledge of himself, which he possesses and imparts to others. I love that. Shall my uncompromisingly righteous one, which is Jesus, my servant, which is Jesus, justify many. Now we're getting into the resurrection side and make many righteous. That's the gospel that Paul preached. Upright and in right standing with God, for he shall bear their iniquities and their guilt with the consequences, saith the Lord. So we see now the resurrected side. We see that what Paul says that he's made us righteous by what Christ did on that cross. Next verse. Therefore will I divide him a portion, that is Christ, a portion with the great kings and rulers, and he shall divide the spoil with the mighty, because he poured out his life unto death. That's why I like that scripture in Revelation 12, verse 11. The believers overcome Satan. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they love not their life unto death. He loved not his life unto death. You will never experience the resurrected life until you go through death. Death and then resurrection. We want the resurrection. All of us do. No. There's a dying process that we all go through and we're all in it. You wonder, why is this happening to me? Believe it or not. There's a dying effect happening that the resurrection may come for. Res we're talking about resurrected life. The Bible says in Romans chapter uh, 8, verse 2, for the life of the Spirit, the life, li everybody say life. That's resurrected life. The life of the Spirit of Christ has set us free from the law of sin and death. Life is what sets us free. When his life is risen in us, these griefs, these weaknesses, these things that we feel dissipate. Because the life now is setting you free from that sin, the result of that sin. Okay? Now that happens here, and of course that will happen throughout eternity, well in eternity when we're resurrected. And he let himself be regarded as a criminal. Well, I don't want nobody to think hard about me. Well, that's true, and I don't. I'll, I, I just praise God for that woman. How many have seen the woman on TV, in the news, that will not issue marriage license uh, to um, gays? You, you see that? Now, she's been... She, now, I, some of us may have to face that one day. As a pastor, when somebody comes in here and, and they're both gays, I love them. I let them know I love them. I let them know Jesus loves them. Not mad at you, but I can't perform your marriage. Well, boom, all of a sudden we're on the news. Pastor, Shield of Faith won't marry these folks. Well, I think what Peter says, it's best to obey God. Fear not man. For the fear of man is the, is the snare of the soul. Fear, not man. And I remember I had fear of man. God had to deal with me. You want to shoot me? Go ahead. Do me a favor. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Paul said it like this. To die is gain? Whew, he must have knew something. Because, folks, I'm telling you, you can live another 40 years 
It's going like that anyway. See, God doesn't look at time like we do. We won't go into that. But see, if you're going to overcome the fear, face death. Go ahead, just face it. Shoot me, I don't care. Because I'll be with Jesus. I read the Bible. Now, we don't want to die. I'm not talking foolishness. But in your heart, your mind, you've got to settle that. If you don't settle that now, when you have to face it, you'll crumble like a coward and give in. That woman made the decision a long time ago what she was going to do, and she's holding firm. And I admire her for that. So anytime somebody wants you to do something that's contrary to the Word of God, you can't do it. I don't care if they put you in jail. Everything you own is gone. It's going to go anyway one day. You think you're going to take it to heaven? That barbecue, barbecue chicken in the refrigerator? You ain't going to take it with you. So you've got to settle those things in your life. Jesus had all that settled in his life. He knew his purpose on this earth. And he stood. Now, he let himself be regarded as a criminal. He let himself be regarded as a criminal and be numbered with the transgressors, yet he bored and took away the sin of many. Now, if your sin has been taken away, what sin do you have? Well, I just committed one yesterday. Well, stop that foolishness because you died to sin. That's what the Bible says, Romans 6, just read it. You died to sin. But if you do, we have an advocate with the Father and confess it. And God is faithful and just to forgive you. But now you're clean. So don't run around and say, I'm just an old sinner. No, you're not. You, you are a saint. You have been one that's been consecrated to God. You belong to God. You don't belong to yourself. I don't belong to myself. Period. That's it. That's the gospel. Look what it says. And took away the sin of many and made intercession. Now, how many of you know? And made intercession for the transgressors, the rebellious. Well, what is he doing in heaven right now? He's interceding. He's our high priest. There he is, his office of the high priest right there. He's interceding for us. What verse is that? I can't see it. Was that 12? 12. All right, we're down to 12. That's the last verse, isn't it? Huh? That's the last verse. Now, that's the gospel right there. You don't see anything about being water baptized, anything for us to do, everything that Jesus did. He did it all. So you accept that by faith. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. Now, the beautiful thing about it, as we read Romans, when he died, the old Adam in us died. Now, the sin principle is still in the flesh. You can sin anytime you want to. And there's times you will be tempted. And there's times you have failed. I don't I have to stand up here and say, none of you guys have ever failed. I've been around 82 years. Every one of you have failed. But what verse did you have to go to? Tell me. 1 John 1, 9. That's good. 1 John 1, 9. Now, let me tell you something. When you go into Romans and understand, knowing this, that our old man has been crucified with Christ. Therefore, reckon yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Verse 6.6, 6, verse 6.11 is verse 6.13. Now, every time you are tempted or any time your body, see there's things that your desires will come up in your human body. You want to do this or I'm tempted to do that. That's all part of the old carcass. And boy, you, I really would like to do that. Don't lie. You'd really like to do it, but you're not. And you say, Father, I thank you. I'm dead indeed under that, but I'm alive under God that, through that Christ. That desire out of us. 
You must understand that. But if you fail to reckon upon it and you yield to the temptation and you've done it, now you feel bad, you feel condemned, you feel guilty, you feel awful, then you confess it before God. He cleanses you, but your conscience bothers you and the devil tries to condemn you. Now you've got to stand against the enemy and overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. Devil, the blood's cleansed me, purged me, that's it. Put it down. Now you got to stand. Now you're in that fight. Now what happens is when you go through that cycle enough, you'll head it off at the pass. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? You don't want to go through that cycle. Yeah, it's a cycle. But yes, God has forgiven you. You're clear as far as God's concerned, but the devil's having lunch with you and me. Because why did I do that again? I knew better. Hello? So, so you've got to know how to walk through those things to keep yourself clear. And the more you go through it, the more you realize, I don't want no more of that. It's like chastisement. It's, it's some type of a degree of chastisement, believe me. Because your guilt, the guilt will eat you alive. You will not be happy. You'll feel bad. You, you feel like God's a thousand miles away. You've got to keep yourself clear at all times. And know that the Holy Spirit will give you grace upon grace to do what? To overcome those tendencies for you to get off the path. We understand that in James chapter 6. Put that on the board and we'll close up. Chapter, uh, James chapter uh, 6, no, 4 verse 6, I'm sorry. And we'll close on this one. For he gives us more and more grace, which is the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God. To meet this evil tendency and all others fully. We all have tendencies. <clears throat> I mean, I can name them falling to church, falling asleep in church, not listening to uh, the pastor's teaching, uh, or the teacher's teaching, uh, got your mind on apple pie when you should be, have your mind on the Lord. How many, all those t tendencies that all of you guys have out there. <laughs> and I have. All right. God will give you more. See, you go to the throne. You go to the throne to receive. Hebrews 4.16 says, you come to the throne of God to receive a good beaten. No, to receive grace and mercy in time of need. You've got to learn to draw God's grace into you and have faith in it. That is why he says God sets himself against the proud and haughty, but gives grace continuously to the lowly and those who are humble enough to receive it. So there's a condition that we've got to be humble enough to say, yes, Lord, I failed. I goofed again. And you'll hate yourself at times. There's times you'll just hate yourself. If you've gone through the same process I have, I know it. Backwards and forwards. But listen, see, it clears up after a while. After a while, you walk in the spirit and you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But how many of you have been through Romans 7, 14, the things that I want to do, I don't do. How many has ever experienced that in your life? If you've been saved, you're going to experience it. I, I knew better, but I did it anyway. Why did I do that? He says, there's no more I that do it, but it is sin in me. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for how you uh, turned the service in, into teaching tonight like this, and we pray that we would understand and comprehend and always understand and appreciate the gospel of Jesus Christ. Death, burial, and resurrection plus nothing else. Now these other things we do because you've asked us and commanded us to do them. But it's not for our salvation. The thief on the cross didn't have any time to do anything. And yet he ended up in paradise. Because, Lord, it's a work of God. Salvation is a work of God in the heart of men. And we thank you for the salvation. 
that you have given to us. And we say with Paul, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.